Whatever oh, you like. Oh, wait. I see what's happening here, actually. With the light as well? Wait. You're trolling. This is actually easy as hell, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's easy as <laughs> hell. <laughs> uh, beautiful. I love it. Wait, that's sick. Wait, wait that's so sick. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, Sessor Brizzo Video here today, bringing you guys one of my favorite videos I've probably had on my channel in a very, very freaking long time. So, today's gonna be my first actual real collab, and it's with one of my favorite artists and designers and illustrators, pretty much that I know of personally. His name is Jesper. Now, if you guys have no idea who Jess Furish is, he's basically like the coolest illustrator person I know. He also comes from our community, the gaming community, the really cool, awesome scene that is. It's pretty freaking cool. So we get to, you know, experience his kind of illustration and kind of his tutorial and tips and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty fun. You're gonna basically see me try my hardest into being an actual illustrator in today's video. And hopefully by the end of today's video as well, that you guys can get to learn a little bit of something as well and like get off of the video and then go to Photoshop and just get digital painting. So. With that being said, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you guys did enjoy. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to Jesper on his YouTube channel as he's pretty much, you know, he just started his YouTube channel up and you want to definitely give him some love. But uh, yeah, hope you guys do enjoy the video here today. And uh, that's it. Enjoy yourselves. We're ready to go. It is time for you to enlighten me with the world of horizon lines, the world of sketching, the world of drawing, and make me your pupil. <laughs> The way you want to start it with the horizon line, so you need to find the horizon line in your reference. So let's see if you can gotcha. find it here. Which is right here, right? Yeah, exactly. And then you just draw draw a straight line or, or you use the ru uh, ruler. So okay. what you want to do now is just, um, yeah, we will make the ground a little bit darker and make sure your whole scene is not white. It's, it's kind of gray because you're not gonna, you're only gonna use white for your highlights in your scene and not for the rest of the scene. So it's kind of useless to start that way. Gotcha. So let's do this horizon line. Oh, look at me. That was the straightest line I've done so far. It's even more, I hold shift. damn, even more accurate than, than my lines now. Yeah, relax, dude. Okay, yeah, the next step is we're gonna identify the shapes in the scene. So the first shapes that you see, the more darker shapes are the rocks themselves. So you want to simplify that and you want to imagine uh, boxes around, around them. So rectangles around them. And you're gonna draw those into the scene. No, no, no I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Damn. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Even after the third oh. time. No. <laughs> Here we go, shut I'm up, dude, I got this. <laughs> I'm okay. So the next step is the perspective. Now we need to define our vanishing points. So we want to follow these lines on the ground and the ones over here and extend them all the way to the end so we can define our uh, vanishing point. So the way all these lines are placed in the scene, we're gonna follow them. And I'm not gonna, uh, they're not really accurate, but it's just to give you an idea of how you should scan your reference. So over here, you see some lines on the ground. This one is moving a little bit more towards so like this. And now we have one here, which is the bottom of this rock. And that, that one is basically moving all the way from here to like, uh, maybe a little bit over there. So as you can see, there's like slowly, there's some sort of grid going on. Yeah. So the way you want to do this, an accurate way is you're gonna pick your one point perspective as I showed you before. Yep, yep, let's do that. So my settings for 2020 Photoshop is 100 here. Then when I go to path options, you said three, put this on black, symmetrical, star ratio at 1%. And then fill is off, right? Yeah, fill is off. <clears throat> okay. So based on the lines that I've just drawn, you're gonna put your one point perspectives in the scene to make sure that they follow these lines that I've been drawing. You see that these lines, they follow the ground and they follow the sky, the lines in the sky over here. I, I've gotcha. drawn these lines in uh, perspective on purpose. So your brain is like, oh yeah, they, your brain can immediately see the perspective in the scene. So it looks way more appealing this way because 
It's like a visual language. Like your brain understands immediately that it's in that specific perspective. So it helps. Oh no, let's first analyze the, the painting that we have. So as you can see, if you want to divide this shape only in the, into a box, so the width and the length, you can see that the light part here is following this grid. This grid line and the darker the darker part is following the other grid line so this is the length and this is the width and that's the same for this part the light part that's reflecting the light is following the lines pointing towards that direction from uh, the right bottom to the left top and this side is uh, the other way around so this the darker sides are following the perspective of the left vanishing point but what you want to okay. do is you want to take a slightly lighter tone than the actual dark tones here in the boxes. So just color pick the gray on the ground, just color pick that, put it on opacity 60 by pressing 6 on your keyboard. So now what you see in the original picture is that the right side is brighter because this is following the right vanishing point. Now what you want to do is we're going to make this face lighter. So now you can imagine that it has two sides. Now it's already kind of 3D because you know you can imagine that yeah, this well, part. I don't know, just doing that, bro. Maybe <laughs> I'm looking excited. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah, I gotta hum. I gotta hum myself really quick. <laughs> You're just screaming. <laughs> nice. Okay. 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 So okay, you, okay, you okay. can do that for the in the back side as well. Just now, the next thing we're focusing on is the way we put the shapes on the ground. And you see that they're not following the grids. Like here, it's moving down. It doesn't make sense. So you want these sides to follow the grid. So they. The right side has to follow the right vanishing point and the left side of the boxes has to follow the left vanishing point. So again we have the width and then we have the length. And we want to make sure we follow those vanishing points. So, so this is what we want to focus on, these two lines kind of. So you want to follow this line and you want to follow that line. That's what you need to focus on. And then if you imagine the ones on the back, it would be something like, something like that. Gotcha. Okay. So then it's in perspective and then the other vanishing point is actually going up so that that's our yeah that's our box right here as you can see so, so same for the top lines over here you just follow them all the way to the vanishing points same for this side that side now you imagine from this point you draw another line to that one and from this point you draw another line to that point and then you have literally a box in 3d space as you can see so that's that's how, how you want to imagine the things that you have drawn right now so it's not just dark shapes but it's actually what we need to think about is that we draw we're drawing boxes into 3d space okay uh, <laughs> that was a real <laughs> fast that was, that was perfect that, yo. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you I didn't expect that after the third it. recording, I right? Not, I did not expect that. No. <laughs> I I was waiting to I was waiting to cut the the the, the, the rock at the bottom. Yeah. Right there. I was waiting. So look at the top of your shapes. They also needed uh, to go into perspective. So you want to follow the grid with the top side as well. And you see, there's a, a heavier angle on the top side. So whenever you look at my screen. You see, you just need to follow this for the for the length and again this for the width. The next thing we want to do is because now we know how to place boxes into perspective. So uh, if you look at the original scene, you want to look at the shapes and they're, of course they're not boxes. So we're going to try to sculpt these shapes into the boxes. So what we do, we cut off the shapes until it ends up being like this. So we take the background color and as you see, we have these yeah. These lines. Like this angle this way and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Can That's I what make mine curved? Yeah, just do whatever you want. Yeah. You want to start thinking in 3D and after you've done this, you can walk in real life and not see wireframes. You will see wireframes everywhere. <laughs> oh God, I'm not ready for that. Uh. <laughs> You'll just render the real life in 3D. You can never see it normal anymore. What we have right now is more organic shapes drawn within the boxes that we started with. So the boxes that we have drawn are actually the guidelines where we will draw our organic shapes within to make sure they're kind of following your perspective. So what we have now is 
Now it's getting more complicated. Okay, so we, we need to make sure that the right element is more um, towards the back. Wait, I can show you an example. This rock is more pointed towards the back, it's more in depth. And this one in the left is more in the front because it's it's not uh, how do you gotcha. say that? It's not on the ground and the right is on the, you can see still see it on the ground. So it's it's a bit further away. So what we want to do is we want to extend one of these lines for the vanishing point again. And we draw them all the way through here. So it's just a little bit under the left one. So in the layering, it's a little bit towards the front. Yeah, exactly. That's what we want. Okay. So now you just you, your brain just knows. Oh, this one is a little bit towards the back, but still in front of this. Back, not the foreground. Yeah. Exactly. Um, what we're doing right now is we're gonna merge everything. The whole thing you just draw. Copy merge so you have everything within the frame. So. What I like to do is just up the contrast. So give it a lot more contrast until you have more black and white. So I, I think you should use it twice and then 200 like this. So you have a lot more contrast in it. This will make it easier to select everything with the magic wand or whatever you want to select it with. Gotcha. Let's do the magic wand tool. So what we're going to do, you just select the rocks that you have drawn. The way we see the contrast over here is it's way darker in the front compared to the back. So what we're going to do now is we select a black tone. Soft brush. Yep. Okay. And then make it really big so you know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. So we make the front one on the left. That's the, the rock that's most in the front. We make that the darkest. Then the one on the right is the most in the front. So that's the second one that's going to be dark. Now for this one, uh, it's pretty dark already. So we want to pick the dark gray of the this uh, rock and then just make the highlights a tiny bit darker. What? I was I was like, wait, I don't know what we're doing. I thought we were gonna like get rid of all of this and all of a sudden these are gonna be our new shapes. <laughs> yeah, this done. Is set <laughs> Finish. value in the sense we're like, light, where light's actually hitting. That's basically what just happened, huh? Yep. So this is only the more atmospheric light. Now we're gonna define our light source. And if you look in this scene, you know that the light source is on the right top because the highlights are on the right here and the shadows of the rocks are pointing towards the left side. And we're, we're basically in the shadow here. So what this whole shadow part is doing from this rock, from the shadow to this rock is a framing technique. So it helps you to frame your scene and to yeah, complement your composition actually. So that's what we're using here. We're gonna draw all these shadows and make sure our light source is on the right top. So okay. what really helps, what I usually do, is if you know that your light source is kind of on the right top, like that, you just draw a little arrow to help you to remember. So you just draw an arrow like this, and you can even draw it in 3D, but that's a little bit too difficult for us now. So we're just gonna yeah, focus yeah. on 2D arrow. These lines from the top rock, you're gonna follow the line of the arrow here, to all the way to the right bottom on the same on the same height as this rock. So you know that this part is gonna be the shadow. Okay, so should I draw that? Yeah, do it. Okay, so new layer. Okay, so at the bottom here, uh -huh. we have another perspective point where the shadow will hit. So we're gonna draw a line, same way as we did for the back side of the rock towards this line. So also following the perspective. So we're gonna draw a line towards the bottom as well. Oh shit. Towards all the way there somewhere. It's so like over here. And then it's moving towards the edge of the shape as well. Yeah, that's just to imagine. We're not gonna use that line. But the bottom line, we're gonna draw the shadow like right here. Nice. So now we kind of have the shadows in there, so you and light basically. So I can get rid of my lines. Yeah. Yeah, we want to make sure our sky is a little bit better, a bit more realistic. So we want to select the whole back plane. So the for you, it's like a more light gray in the back. You want to select that. Oh, wait. This right here. Yeah. So if you look at the reference, you see that the bottom here is way lighter 
blue, then the top. Then the top. And that's in real life too, because you have a lot of atmospheric light going on, a reflective light of Earth. So we want to make sure that the, the top is a little bit darker than the bottom. So we have a gradient in the back. That's okay. Dark at the top. So like this. Okay. Dark at the top. And it can be pretty dark. Pretty dark. Just go over it again. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> now we have our <laughs> little rocks into perspective. But now, now it's gonna get. Oh no! Now we're going all in. Now it's gonna be difficult because we're gonna imagine shapes within shapes. So what if you look mean? at this, remember the boxes that we that we are just were just drawing. So yeah. now we want to imagine a lot of different boxes around these shapes so you see this one you want to make sure that shadow line is following the same shape here as these lines as the outlines because now for you it's just a straight line you see so you want to make yes. sure it follows and then it cuts that it's, off that here it's following where though sorry you see your line is straight here you just yes. want to you just want to follow these lines that you have drawn on the side just like gotcha. there's a, a <clears throat> wait i'm gonna draw the box so you can imagine it so what I'm seeing right now when I'm drawing this is literally a box like that, actually. So we're oh. gonna divide this rock into different boxes. So what we can do is just cut off the corner here a little bit. So the reason why we do that is we imagine this to be a box like that. And then this over here is another box. So right where it cuts off, these boxes are linked in the rock. But you're just you're only you're only drawing that in the shadow. You're not really drawing the whole shape. Gotcha. So yeah, that's how you uh, draw the structures real quickly. Now we're doing the same thing here at the bottom. So what you see how you have drawn these parts here? Yeah. These cuts. So you want to imagine that this at the bottom as a box separately from the box on the top you see you see it has this shape now yes the lights from the top and uh, it hits like it, it can't go through this rock at the top yes. but yes. if you follow that line it's still hitting this part so you need to make sure that this part is still light because it still hits light. The more questions I ask, the more questions that, you know, if anyone has, if there, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people trying to do this themselves while we're doing it ourselves. So I'm just trying to like, you know, how about, let's make it a thing that if anyone's watching, right, you tweet at me and Jesper, I'll give it, uh, the apps will be in the description down below. Um, Jesperish is his, SSOHQ is mine. You can tweet us like, your versions of what you did here. If you're an illustrator, fuck off though, because like I leave it for the the people who aren't illustrators. You know, don't try to don't try to flex too hard, right? Like we're we're still trying out here, but you know, that's just, that's just the play. That's just what I'm thinking. So I'm just trying to make sure I uh, I give people the most sort of like I don't want to do bare minimum, basically, right? I want to make mistakes so that people can also make mistakes and figure out how they fix them. Um, is the play here, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's how you learn the fastest. So realistically, I feel like this face right here is a little awkward. So how do I face yeah. this? Is this just using the shadows? Yeah, you just have a straight line right now. And... So just give it more something else? Yeah. Just just play oh. around. Play around with that line. Oh. You see? And just, and like you cut the corners and the sides, you can cut corners here and this too. Like this or like that. And then make it more like that on the left. See? Yeah. Oh sh! Oh god! Wait, but that changed so much. You know, you know what's what's crazy? Wait, I'm gonna shoot. This. You're gonna like this. So if you pick the light color, I am gonna draw a small plane in the dark here. It's like it's divided. It's like a crack in there. You see? Oh! Yo, it took me. A f wait, wait. It took me a second to see it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, <laughs> well, that's so sick! That's so sick! Are you kidding me? But 
I saw it in this phase, there is so much tweaking going on. So I, I think oh, the, the I think the main thing that I just explained is what people need to know. The rest is just tweaking constantly based on uh, grids to see if it looks right or wrong. Because you're constantly gonna use the grid as your guideline. Uh, this one, just to check everything constantly, everything. Over here, the shadow would more be more towards this point because. You see, it's moving up here. That means that the light will come through here and then follow this line. And then this is basically the shadow. So let's go for the color. As you can see, what you recognize first is just the basic colors. Now we have the blue color. Uh, yeah, white isn't the color, but yeah, you see the clouds. Yeah. We have the more brownish here and a more light brown at the bottom. So those are the three kind of colors that we want to use. Now, okay. What I'm doing is I'm creating a new layer. I put it on color, okay. go with that, and then we start painting on top of the scene with opacity 40. Okay, I'm gonna use the marker again. Yeah, that's nice. So we're using that color at the, the floor of our scene, like in the reference. So only at the floor. And then just make sure that it has just enough color so 40 and it has more color in the front so brighter uh, saturation in the front and a little bit less a bit more gray tones in the back so the next one is the more red tones so we pick the more red color so you don't want to make it too saturated because then it doesn't look natural anymore you want to keep the tones in between the middle and the left basically. and now you're just gonna draw on the rocks Probably just put your opacity on 70 or something. I think you, we can, yeah, maybe 40 for the left, ro for the, the rock that's the furthest away. Just so, it, so it has a little bit less color, a bit more gray tones. So in the original, we have the blue sky. Gotcha. Like, blue you sky. can just color pick it, yeah, yeah. And now we just draw on the sky. 60%, I would say. So now we have the main colors just blocked out. So we can kind of see what we want. Now we can just color pick in the scene. So just color pick the colors. You can you can make a new layer on top of that and just color pick all these colors. And then you just gotta like we're cleaning it up now. Yeah, you just you can just clean it up then. exactly. So if you see more sky behind it, you just cut off the rock right there with the blue. Oh like shit. This. So we're cutting up the shapes. Make sure our layering is accurate. So what we can do now is a new layer. We can put it on overlay because we want more variation within our colors. Put it on overlay. Oh yeah. So pick just pick white as a color. Oh okay. Now we're gonna paint in some highlights. So put your opacity on 40. Okay. And we remember that our light source. Look at the arrow, it's coming. it's coming for that. So that everything in the front won't have these highlights. Only where the light hits right on the plane of the rocks, you get the more the most uh, yeah, the light, lightest parts of the rock. So you know that if the light comes from here and it hits directly on this plane, so the line the line of the arrow aligns with the line on this plane, you know it's gonna hit the the light is gonna hit right on the rock, so you get the the highlight on there. Gotcha. Same for the rocks in the back. If that line is right on this part, you're gonna have highlights. So the back one is gonna have a lot of highlights. A lot. Okay. Yeah. Same for the floor. You can uh, you can fix the sky that way as well. So you just pick a more darker blue color, <clears throat> and you just paint on top of the sky like this, the top, to get a more dark blue top of your sky. <clears throat> so you take you take this image here okay where do you go from this do you then go into detail immediately or do you work do you work more on the op like the actual objects first and then work on shadow and ground or do you work on an object all the shadow on that object and then you move to another object um to be honest i just work all over the place and whatever feels good to me or feels off to me, I'm gonna work on that. So I'm trying to balance the whole painting as one at once. I'm not focusing on one little detail. Gotcha. Okay. 
So only when I'm going into the actual detail, like drawing like this, that I'm focusing on certain areas, otherwise it's not doing Gotcha. Okay, because like there's a big difference between what we have here and here. Okay, so I guess the only thing I would want to know then is how do you draw clouds? Clouds? Okay. So select your layer here in the back. So you want to pick a more lighter color, I think. I think white in this case will fit because the okay. the highlight, the light here will actually hit on the, like, uh, can you say that? Yeah, hit right on the cloud. So they will be pretty bright. Now you know that these bigger clouds, they have more, if you look at the reference, have more of these rounder shapes. So we, we kind of want to draw the clouds with circles. And then for the composition, I put a higher cloud on the right. So you have this angle towards the vanishing point. So you're kind of focused on this rock. It kind of frames out the sky, you see? Because this line of the cloud on the right side over here is pointing that way. Oh, okay. That's it. And the uh, same as we did for the rocks, we know that the clouds have like circles within circles, basically, all these little parts. Mm -hmm. So we just want to keep drawing these small kind of circles on top of these circles to make them look more like clouds. So now we kind of have a, a block out for the clouds. And then you just basically keep adding more and more circles yeah. and just... Yeah, smaller circles. Ah. Of course... So just adding clouds just makes this actually look like an actual composition already. Yeah, it brings it more uh, yeah, alive. Life, yeah. So you have these bigger clouds, but you know that if something moves into perspective, you know that you have a lot of small clouds at the bottom that will give you more of the depth of the scene. So right now, just make a new layer. We're gonna focus on something else. I think that's really important. Okay. So we have this grid, right? And you see that uh, normally the further you go away, the further these squares, uh, the smaller these squares would get. We can't see that right here, but it's just, you yeah, know, yeah. you know that the objects exactly. get way smaller. Yeah. So what you want to imagine is this shape fits within this line that points toward that, and this line that points points toward the vanishing point. Vanishing point. Now imagine if this object will follow all the way to the vanishing point, and it ends up right here. How small it would be between those lines. Now you want to imagine that with all uh, all the shapes in the back, like how big would they be if they would be at the same kind of uh, place in the scene. What helps me uh, to make it more accurate, of course, you have so many different shapes of rocks, so it doesn't really matter. But if you want to have, if you have the same size buildings, this will really help. So you pick a, the point here where the, uh, yeah, how do you say that? The highest point of the rock, you have it within your scene. I don't have it within my scene. And then okay. put it towards the vanishing point. Same for the bottom part, all the way to the vanishing point. Doesn't matter which one. So now imagine if the rock stands like right here, right here somewhere. And then you make a straight line from the bottom here to the, into your seat. So you draw a straight line right into the part. You, say, you do the same for the top part here. So now you know exactly how big you need to draw this rock if it would stand all the way in the back there. Oh, okay. You see? Oh, sh so, so you, you just do this with your eye though. You don't actually even make these little grid things. No, I just, uh, it's just when you have done it so many times, you kind of just know it. it's just, yeah. So you just draw, huh. draw the same shape, but lighter because it's more atmospheric. You draw it in the back there. Like I, I Damn. just, I just pick the highlight color here, and I just know like it should be around this big. That's cool. yeah, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. That makes a lot, lot of sense. sense. Put more shadow here, and it makes it look more natural because it's you, you kind of have similar shapes in the background, so your eye automatically knows like, oh, this is this kind of environment because there are a lot of the same shapes. Yeah, you just what you basically do is the same in game development. You just right now we only selected the rocks, but imagine if you have uh, different parts of grass or different parts of trees or any kind of element and scenes, and you apply the same technique to it. 
you can fill the whole scene with all different kinds of pieces of nature basically so you can just fill up your scene and perspective that's actually yeah that's inc <laughs> that's incredible dude i might be able to take this drawing and try to like speed up my way to making it look better and then i have you judge it at the end or something like that okay Hell yeah. Well, I mean, I think from what you just taught me, all of that, I think this is a the, the perfect place to just sort of like pause and take the, I feel like people, <laughs> we just birthed, you just birthed like at least a hundred illustrators is what I want you to understand. Like there's going to be so many people who kind of like, who I hope get it. Get it. Like, I really like, hope uh, so. I really, really hope so. As well as like, cause the way you taught me just now and the way you kind of explained everything just now to me personally that worked for me. Like the clicks, you know, like when you had like those little things that have to just click, that definitely worked for me just then, just now. So like, I, I do think you might've just birthed like at least a hundred, like I'm gonna say even more. I don't know, we don't know how big this video is gonna get, but. And yeah, there's just, there's so yeah, much information behind all of this. So it's really hard to explain everything, but I really hope that people understand these main kind of points and how, how you can set up a scene for yourself. So I, re I just really hope it inspires people and they actually get it. They know how to start. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely positively sure that you definitely just did. I guess, so I guess for the end of the video here, do you have anything, of course, you want to shout out? I'll put all the links in the stuff in the description that you guys like, you can purchase some of his displayed stuff, but let you just kind of like take the range really quick to shout yourself out. Also, he has a YouTube channel. I want to say that myself as well. You should definitely go check that out as well. But yeah, what's up? You got anything you definitely want to shout out? actually not really like only my youtube channel i recently started and i'm really trying to grow over there i'm giving it a go and i'm so excited for it i really want to teach people yeah drawing in a fun way more focused on how it works in life and how you should observe in order to create rather than just the software so i see i see no reason why your youtube doesn't blow up bro i'm dead serious I'm gonna I'm gonna say I had the first collab with the first 10 million subscriber, you know, illustrator on YouTube is what I'm gonna I'm gonna tell this video in the future. But uh, yeah, man. Dude, thank, I, you, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Almost 200 k subscribers. <laughs> oh, relax, dude. Crazy. All right, guys, that's the end of the video here today. So hopefully, you guys had a little bit of fun. You enjoyed some stuff. You learned some stuff. I just think just with the way he taught me, you can just see my energy levels go up and up and up because I literally was just like. It was cool to me. It was cool to me to like think I knew how to draw because I'm not gonna lie. I left Photoshop. I started drawing my own little stuff and I was like, yo, I kind of get it. So hopefully you guys have that same exact idea, that same exact theory when you guys leave this video and you guys feel like you can actually go draw something really cool. Um, but yeah, with that being said, guys, please be sure to actually follow Jesper on all the socials. Please be uh, sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel. So if you're into wanting to learn how to draw or you already know how to draw and you want to like even elevate that, please be sure to uh, visit him, check him out, subscribe to him, all that good stuff. But yo, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys later. Set so HQ out. You know, you gotta keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking with the guys. Later. Much love. Also, he has a display, by the way, where you can go buy some of his stuff. You can see this thing right here. That, that's from him, by the way. So if you guys ever known, it's always been there. So that's all I got. Love you guys. Peace.